Hello, I should be writing listeners. This is Mer Lafferty, and I'm opening this up with a little bit of information. A little bit of news. Because of burnout and because of finishing my latest book, I have decided to take June off of most things, including recording and podcasting. You'll be getting this in June 2022 because I recorded it in May and didn't get it up. This kind of thing led to the burnout. But haven't had a chance to talk about the fact that I will be interviewing John Scalzi about his latest book, The Kaiju Preservation Society, for our latest Spoilers Club interview, June 25th, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. If you need to be reminded what the Spoilers Club is, we read the book ahead of time and then talk to the author about why they made decisions. Any topic is up for grabs. We're going to be doing it live and then placing it in the feed later. If you want to watch live and join us, that would be twitch.tv slash Mighty And again, that's June 25th, 2022, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Now let's get to our show. The minute you put a date into your manuscript, you're going to have to start cross-referencing. So be prepared. And I'm going to prepare you on I Should Be Writing, Season 18, Episode 38. And hi there! Welcome to I Should Be Writing. This is the podcast for wannabe fiction writers. Uh, (laughs) I've been doing this podcast since 2005 when I'd sold nothing and now I'm building a writing career and the podcast has pretty much chronicled that and all the things I've learned along the way. And it's for beginning writers or anybody who wants some creative advice. So we start out with the accountability part and luckily I brought my laptop in here so I could look because I forgot to look at my word count today but it's big I wrote all morning dang it all morning and I'm gonna find there it is right 3,257 words today oh and I crossed the 50,000 word mark go me It doesn't seem like I'm far in, but I think I've gotten to a point where I'm very comfortable with where it's going, who the murderer is, and what's happening in all the B plots. And so writing's going a lot faster now, which is really nice. But yeah, good writing day today. Hopefully we'll have one tomorrow. Gonna have to figure out how to write on the road. It's not easy for me. It really isn't. But... I mean, we, we got to go get the child. So, you know, it's priorities, you know, thank you for all the yay buttons. That's very sweet folks. Thank you. So yeah, that's, that's me. I, at least I'm feeling good about that, how that's going. And yesterday I had a good, uh, word count too. Sorry. Let me get this back up here. I love, I love Scrivener. I'm not endorsed. I'm not supported, not sponsored. I just love Scrivener. And I'm not afraid to say it. Um, Yeah, yesterday was a... Oh, I see. (laughs) I got confused. Yesterday was not a lot of words. Wow, okay. Yesterday was 270. I guess I just finished that chapter and then thought ahead. Wow, really thought I had more than that. Oh, well. Um, But lots of words today. Yeah, so on to good news. I'd say the dog's foot is officially healed now because she's licking all of the other feet because she has allergies. (laughs) We can't win. But the injured toe is healed. So big. I know this is means nothing. I've just been, it's, it's been a constant thing in the back of my mind because it took far too long to heal. So, um, 
Yeah, I did not, was not happy about that. So that, that stress is gone. Very happy about that. And, um, my daughter's coming home this week, which is awesome. Oh, and I want to show you the other good news. This is, this is going to be incredibly unprofessional. My marketing people at ACE emailed me and said, we're going to be making you some social media art so you can, you know, promote the book. And I said, great. How about Twitch art? And they're like, well, we've never done that before. And I sent them, uh, sometimes I support Extra Life and Extra Life gives you some just static overlays to advertise that you're raising money for Extra Life. So I sent them those as examples. And I haven't, I haven't set it up yet and I also haven't connected my mic. But I'm just going to cycle through and show you guys how amazing this looks. So yeah, that was, I'm, I'm very, very happy about that. I've got like a, also a, you know, thanks for watching end of the stream thing. I've got a be right back stream banner. So I'm, I'm just so happy. They were very, very kind to make those for me. And, uh, they also gave me the font. So if I need to write anything like say, oh, the episode name, it won't stand out like a sore thumb. So yes, very excited. Very happy about that. I can't remember when this happened. It's possible I'm repeating myself. I apologize if I am, but I, I did get a solicitation from an old editor for a new project, which was very cool. And I need to get back to her on that. But uh, that was a nice little ego boost that, that this thing I did was good and they want more. So can't get used to that feeling. Oh boy, I wish I could, I really do. And so I want to offer you guys to um, to share with me your good news, because I like good news. And remember that good news can, if you are comfortable, include rejections, because getting rejections mean you're, you're doing your job as a writer. You're just not getting paid for it yet. And I'm not pretending that it doesn't suck, I'm just saying celebrate it because other people who are afraid of rejection are not working writers because they're not submitting. Wonderful, Kungai. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you. Welcome. Very glad you're, you're checking out the Twitch. Daniel received a rejection fifth for the year. Congratulations. Have I set this back up? I did! Oh my god, I was responsible! Oh, wow! Okay, sorry. <laughs> did not expect that to happen. Okay, I thought it was still stuck on um, the spoilers. Uh, author Chris has an episode under review on Kindle Bella. Let's get some yay buttons going on here. That's awesome. Congratulations, Daniel. Is finding an a fellow writer who is an enabler of uh, good news, because I've been given, I've been talking to an author and she's definitely giving me ideas and support to do the ideas. Yes, that's building your community. It's also networking and it's also finding an accountability buddy, possibly. So those are all good things. Um, and under Pope received one rejection since the last stream. Congratulations. Rejections go up. Fantastic. And if you are listening to the podcast later and you would like to, um, if you're listening later and you want to send me your good news, please do so. And, uh, I will put it, read it on the next live show, which will be next Tuesday. Um, like I said this before the recording started, there will be no live show on Thursday, which considering I usually post these about a week after I, uh, record them. I suppose it's moot, but uh, to anybody who just came in, there will be no live show on Thursday. And I have tea. So, um, yesterday was a very stressful day. I want, oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so I 
I said I got 270 words yesterday and, and was surprised because in my memory, I worked my butt off yesterday. But I did not write new words on the new book yesterday. That was the problem because I was... Well, first I realized I'd screwed something up and I had to fix it as soon as possible, which is a great feeling. It's awesome. It makes you feel real responsible, adult-like. And I was looking at my, uh, some final edits on book one, Station Eternity, which was due on the 11th, which I'm pretty sure is today. I don't have a calendar around here. I have so many things and I'm not sure. No, it's tomorrow. Okay, well, I would have had one more day, but I wanted to get it done. But I was looking at the edits and I don't, I, I don't want to go into too much detail because it'll be confusing, but I just want to say that my character is someone who murders happen around. Think Father Brown, um, Jessica Fletcher, Miss Fisher, just any anybody that, that their lives seem to often have murder mysteries and they're not even part of law enforcement, which is kind of weird. And you make, which I always wondered, the joke was that Jessica Fletcher was the most successful serial killer ever because, you know, she always pinned it on somebody else. But I always wondered like, why does anybody want to hang out with them? So I wrote a book about it. And so this woman has logged all the murders that she has experienced or been part of or solved. And considering they started when she was seven and she's now in her thirties and there have been 18 referencing them and the dates proved to be very difficult because some things would change on rewrite and you don't realize that when you list a lot of dates, if you change one thing, there can be a ripple effect. So I was going through and looking at the times that this was listed as the fourth murder and this was listed as the eighth murder, and she didn't write a book about the 13th murder, or was that the 17th? And it started to get a little out of control, and I thought I fixed it on the last edit, and I had not. The good news is, like, most of the edits are change a year, change a number, like this This wasn't the fourth, it was the fifth, etc. Sometimes I just made it vague. Like, I said it was a decade, and they're like, no, it was 12 years. And I'm like, okay, about a decade. <laughs> That's all I changed. About a decade ago. And um, I was trying to think if there was a better way I could have done this. Because it, it was awful. I, I wrote them yesterday, and I said, okay, I've looked through all the edits. I can fix this. Unfortunately, it's going to cause a ripple effect, and now I have to make sure I read through and find all of the other things that's going to change. Oh, and of course, a lot of these things are interlaced with some somebody else's story. So, small spoiler, one of the people she encounters during this book was involved in a previous murder that she solved. And so when I go back into both of their backstories, which are covered at different points in the book, I have to make sure everything fits. And so... The way I had it was my protagonist said the murder happened in one year and then I look at the other character's timeline and that person hadn't even met the person who was murdered for like three more years. And it was just, just a mess. It was just a mess. And so I, I did my best. I went through and I searched years. I searched numbers like 18, 18th, and I just went down the number, went, went, just counted backwards until I made sure everything fit. And I'm still not sure I got it all right. And so I was trying to weigh how to deal with this and also to present it to you guys because a lot of people, when they're starting out writing a book, this is not the kind of thing they want to keep track of. 
because when you're writing a book and you're in that 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 exciting headspace of creation, cross-referencing ain't in your vocabulary. But keep in mind when you say something happened in X year. Keep in mind what you reference happening at a specific point in someone's life. Here, here's another roadblock I hit. I needed a certain amount of murders to happen when she was a child. A certain amount of murders happen in college and a certain amount after college. And I realized I had referenced five or six murders during college and she's only there for two years. I'm like, Okay, now I have to make sure I cram all of these college murders into the college years. And yeah, it was it thinking about this is something I've never thought of before. But when you're referencing something and it happens at a point in your life, especially say younger than 25, you go through a lot of rites of passage. And so did this happen before or after the character could drink? Did it happen before or after they could drive? Did it happen before or after they got married? These little things can matter. And it sucks. So uh, this is where Scrivener comes in handy. Again, I'm not endorsed. I'm not sponsored. I just love them. No, that, that would be them and me endorsing them and them sponsoring me. Anyway, no money has changed hands, but as you write in Scrivener, you will have a handy sidebar for notes, which is where I'm putting, if I give someone a strange name, I put what the name means to me in the sidebar. If I put a clue in there that is not obviously a clue yet, I say, this thing is a clue because X is going to happen later. If something needs to be retconned because I like what I wrote just now and it contradicts a previous thing I wrote, then I write that down. I'm gonna see what else I wrote down. Just cuz. Let's see. She didn't reveal X because she didn't, re she doesn't reveal X for a reason. Uh, here is why she has a bruise in that area. And what happened then that won't be uncovered until later. There's a character missing from the scene and I don't know where he is. And so there's a big all caps, where is this guy? And um, I named an entomologist after I gave her the last name of a specific bug that came out of the region that she lives in. The Latin name. And if someone asks, like, why in the world do you have an... Uh, Iranian woman with this weird last name, I'll remember because it's in the sidebar. Things like that can also help with numbers and dates because y'all, cross-referencing's hard when you don't know a specific keyword to look for. Because if you've got, you know, you can't search a character's name unless they don't come up very often. You can't search a word like murder or whatever your book is about. Mine's about space murder. So space and murder and aliens. Not really a searchable word because there's just too many. If anybody else has a better way of keeping track of this stuff, let me know. Um, I'm also not sponsored, but I've used, I've endorsed them before. Uh, the Eon, Eon Timeline. I can't pronounce it, but it's A-E-O-N. And it is software where you can, um, at the, the reason why I got it was because I just wanted to look at the timeline and, and see that all the timeline and all the stuff laid out. But as I learn more about it, you can put people connected to events. You can make notes within the, the little timeline mark that you make. You can make notes about who's involved, what part of the story it is, how much tension there is, which was neat. I haven't used it, but I'm thinking that that's an interesting point here. And then, um, you know, you can go into decades between things. You can go like, you know, really, really uh, close minute specifics. 
one thing that I should have used earlier, I, I didn't know to use it, is you can connect events so that if something moves, something else has to move. For example, in one person's timeline, I have a specific murder that she solves, but when I'm talking about this other character who's also connected to that murder, that murder's on her timeline too. And so they need to be the same date and time, and so I can just connect the two. So if one of them moves, the other one's going to have to move, and hopefully it'll stick out that that has gone to a wrong place in the timeline. And something else has to shift. So I'm still learning how to use it, but it's it's pretty cool. One thing that did help is they've there are uh, three books that are laid out in... Three existing books laid out. And one of them is Murder on the Orient Express, which is great because I'm doing a murder mystery too. So the whole, like... Here is the lie of what happened. Here is what's revealed happened. Here's X person's testimony. And there are a lot of layers, and there's some stuff I still can't figure out how they did it, because it's just I'm just looking at the final thing. But it's it's very, very detailed and interesting and really helps helps me understand sort of what it does. Author Chris has to keep notes for facts like that. Use Joplin to keep notes. I have not heard of Joplin. What can you tell us about Joplin, author Chris? I don't know. That's what I forgot. Oh, crap. Somebody asked for a reading and they gave to St. Jude, which I am still collecting money for. I just forget to talk about. So yeah, I'm still raising money for St. Jude. The rewards are I don't groan at puns for five minutes and I'll actually read them. Um, I do free writing on screen. I read part of my book live. Um, I do an entire episode with Evil Myrrh. Um, these are all down here. If you are feeling like you have some cash and would like to support kids with cancer. Did I do that right? I didn't do that right, did I? Of course not. Really, guys, my, my brain is kind of laser-focused on the book right now, and it's it's going to be an awkward month of, ep of episodes. I'm just saying. Rejection for the counter. Awesome, Christian writing. Congratulations. Well done. Hit, hit the yay button. Hit the un-yay button, and then hit the yay button. I don't know why it doesn't tell you. Actually, I think it does toggle on enough. I have to turn it off to turn it back on. You know, stuff. So, when I finish my episode, um, I will be reading from, I guess, Station Eternity. Because if I read from book two, it'll be all confusing. So, yeah, stick around for that. Anyway... I don't know if I can actively endorse new writers fussing about dates and stuff because, you know, when you're starting out, it's like anything that stands in your way can be a much bigger roadblock. Because if you think like, oh, well, Mer said to keep up with my numbers and now I'm all confused and forgot what the plot is. So clearly I suck at this and clearly I'm going to quit. I don't want that to happen. But... If you do use, say, time travel, or to pick something completely at random, long-lived clones whose lives intersected several times in their past, or just someone with a lot of events in their life that should be chronicled, keep track of it some way. If you have to do it on edits, do it on edits. Do a read-through of your book. And as you're making edits of what needs to be changed, note every single number. If there's a list of people, make sure that the number you say on page 5 is the same number of names you list on page 15. I also had that. I can't tell the difference between 10 and 9, apparently. This is the not fun, not sexy part of writing. But it's very important because, you know, somebody out there is going to say, like, how in the world did she solve this case before this person had even met the murdered person? How, how is that possible? And, you know, I'll be like, but I logged it really well in this program. I just didn't put it in the, I didn't put it in the software. 
That's sloppy. So yeah, I'm trying to say I suffered and I want you to not suffer. Learn from my suffering. It was a very stressful day yesterday trying to get all that done. And that's the kind of thing, I think it's an ADHD thing. I think it, it's the kind of thing I have to do in one sitting. I can't start and then stop because I won't remember you know, it takes me a while to get into the, okay, I am looking for these keywords. I am watching this, you know, just to get everything in my mind settled so I can say, look for the right stuff and know how to fix it. And if I come back tomorrow, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that again. I probably will, but there's no counting on it. <laughs> so I'm going to end the podcast here. Hopefully the next podcast you hear will be just a regular non-streamed podcast because I am not going to be here on Thursday. And if not, well, then I didn't get a podcast done and you'll hear the next live one from next Tuesday. My name is Mer Lafferty and this has been I Should Be Writing. You can find out more about me at merverse.com and you can check out my stuff on social media, say, usually Mighty Mer, Mighty Mer on Twitter, Mighty Mer 2, numeral 2 on Instagram. And all the rest I really don't do a lot with. I should, but I don't. You can order my book, pre-order my book, Station Eternity, from all sorts of places. I, I suggest you support your local bookshop. If you can't, then you can. there are a lot of other places you can order it. Or if you'd like to, try to win it for free. There's a Goodreads giveaway, and uh, we'll put that... Yeah, there's a Goodreads giveaway for Station Eternity. And I'll put that link in the show notes for everybody. And um, I think that's everything I need to talk about for now. I hope that you keep track of what you're writing. Trust me. Even, even just do it on edits. But remember that it should probably be done if you start using dates and start using numbers of things that happen in your books. It's so much easier if you've got a reference sheet. So much easier. Trust me. But don't let it bog you down when you're writing because you should be writing. Why do I, do this to I Should Be Writing It's available to you Why under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Theme music by John Anilio. Art by Numbers Ninja. Production by Summer Brooks. And hosting by Libsyn. Find all of this information and more at merverse.com. And remember, we can't do this without you. Thanks for your support. Doctor Who